Sometimes people bring load calculations to me and say, hey, how do I read this? And I just want to show everybody that this is like not, there are things to look out for that are always kind of green flags or red flags. So this is just one page that we're going to look at. First of all, if it doesn't say on it somewhere, manual J or ASHRAE approved heat load calc, then it, there are a bunch of different ways that are approved ways per code to calculate uh, heating and cooling. Some of them are wrong, and we've talked about that, even with Manual J. Manual J has some fat built into it in some weird places, and we they're rewriting it right now uh, in response to that. But we wanna just check some things. So first off, we can find out if what the designer, the whoever is doing this calculation, we can imagine that it's a designer, even if it's just a, somebody in an office somewhere who is an intern putting in these numbers or an HVAC professional who might rather be installing equipment or somebody who really specializes in this and just does numbers like an engineer. By the way, be careful about engineers because they typically work on commercial spaces because that's where a lot of the work is. We got 2,911 square feet. Check your plans. Is that right? And it should be uh, about right. Cooling peak occurs in July at 1,500 hours. That's kind of interesting. I mean, I think that July is not out of the question. August, July, August are all pretty hot. Five o'clock is generally what we say is in the residential space. That's when the sun is going to clear past your roof eaves and really start beaming into those windows. Also, in residential land, and this is not, commercial land is different. And this is one of the clues that this is a commercial person doing this. In residential land, five o'clock is when people are coming home from work or school and cooking. In commercial land, there's no cooking going on inside of this. So that, I think, is one clue right here that uh, we're not dealing with somebody who really is specializing in residential. Heating peak occurs at winter design temperature. Design temperature, just reminded everybody, is the 99% coldest temperature that you're historically an experience, not the 100%. And it's actually explicitly stated in the load calc manuals like Manual J not to use the 100%. Okay, so cooling sums at peak. We're just gonna look at cooling for right now because it's one of the more complicated ones. You can use this same strategy with heating, um, but you've got two things going on in cooling. You've got sensible and you've got latent. Here are those words right here. <clears throat> sensible means temperature that you can see on the thermostat. That's the actual temperature that you would measure. Latent is hidden, that's what that word means, and that is humidity. So it's what happens if the humidity was to condense on things, it will add more heat, just like sweating, evaporating moisture, lowers the temperature, that's why you sweat. Uh, the latent heat is something that can add to the heat inside the house. So we've got a total sensible of 51,000 and a half uh, sensible heat that's being added to this house that we're gonna need to take away. And we've got a total uh, latent uh, over, here, the total, and again, this is like the, uh, typical of, of softwares, uh, they're not going to give us exactly what the number is. So you subtract 80,826, uh, you take 51,506 out of that. The latent is 29,000 uh, BTUs. So that's quite a split. Normally, if you take 29,320, which is what the latent heat remainder is between this right here, and this, and we divide that into the whole, the total, which is 80,826, we are left with a really interesting number. This number is 36%. So the, the air conditioning system that we're in, the cooling system that we're gonna need to put in this thing is gonna need to do 64% cooling, 36% drying. There is no residential air conditioning system that does that. In fact, most of them are tending up towards the 80% cooling, 20% drying, or even higher, uh, which is partly why we need to work with dehumidifiers in homes a lot these days. So that's a really kind of an alarming number. We're going to get into why that's there, but that's the first thing that we're just looking at. The cooling supply airflow is 2234 CFM. That's bigger than a five ton. That's about five and a half tons of uh, cooling flow if you're using a typical 400 CFM per ton, which these guys are clearly not because we've got a big, great big load here. 80,000, 12,000 BTUs per ton. So if we take roughly 80,000 divided by 12,000, <clears> that's 6.7 tons that are needed in this calc. So the internal total, internal loads are things that are added 
uh, adding heat from the inside. So they're not about the sun or the weather at all. They're just about inside. So people sensible. We got 2,000 BTUs per hour added by people. There are eight people modeled into this place. Now, I will remind you that this is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a, a day in July. This is really just this one moment, hottest day of the year at the peak temp is when we're looking at this. Are there really going to be eight people in here? That would mean that you have seven bedrooms in this 2,900 square foot home. I doubt it. That's another clue that we're using a commercial kind of methodology when we're building this. Eight people probably don't belong in this house. So we can take this number down. Roughly set people at about 230, if you're using manual J, 230 BTUs per hour of heat and another 200 BTUs per hour of humidity. So if you've got five people, you're adding about 1400 BTUs of heat and about another 1000 BTUs of humidity to a space. Lighting right here. This should not be in here at all. This is another clue that we're using a commercial uh, methodology because it is July. That's when the sun is shining the hardest. Uh, and it's at three o'clock in the afternoon. Why are we running all of the lights in the house at the same time at three o'clock in the afternoon in July? We won't. And in fact, even at five o'clock in the afternoon in July, we don't do that. So you never put anything in here in residential calculations for lighting. Zero is the answer for that. Unless for some insane reason, somebody insists that they're going to have their basketball court, which, uh, you know, I don't work on giant houses because I want to work with normal people. But um, if you had that kind of thing and somebody really insisted, then, you know, you could put it in there. And that's one of the things is that like designers get a lot of instructions from people who have done a little bit of research, not as much research as you, not watching this channel probably. Um, and they think that they know what they're talking about. They're like, I have two dishwashers. I've got two dryers. They're all going to be running at the same time. And that goes into this number right here, which really should be somewhere between, let's say 1500 and 2400 generally when I'm doing this. There are people who do what I do, who are more extreme than I am. And anybody you're listening to in this space is an extremist, like, let's be honest. But those people have back tuned because they are designing and then installing their own equipment. Uh, and they can understand everything about the air sealing and insulation of a home, which a lot of HVAC professionals don't know how to test for air sealing and insulation in homes. So they're just guessing. And that's what makes them nervous about correctly sizing things. But these people are not adding any equipment load. They don't add any defaults to this. And they're finding that that really gives them the correct number for when they then back out and test the actual load performance in real life, which you can do now. There's a tool called Measure Quick out there that you can get, uh, you can ask your local HVAC company if they use that to actually track what the thing is actually doing, what your house is, is needing. Okay, so external total. This is stuff that is based on weather and the sun from outside. We have about 31,000. So inside we've got about, let's just say 10. Outside we've got 31,000. That's a, quite a split. Um, that's a lot of internal. We already talked about this. I would take about half of uh, off that um, to begin with. So there's that. As far as the external load goes, we've got 5,000 being sucked uh, into the house, the heat being sucked into the house through the walls, 15,000 through the windows, 3,000 through the roof, 3,000 through a skylight. And by the way, that's why we don't really like skylights is because the whole roof is beaming the same amount of heat into the house as one skylight. And the, and I don't know how big this skylight is. Let's see, uh, 47 square feet. What is that? Divided by five. So that's a five by nine. It's probably two skylights, but that's still outrageous. So skylights, not really your friend when it comes to solar gain. And then the slab is also adding to the heat. That's wrong. So this right here, the slab is in contact with the ground. There's no way that that's happening. And part of the reason that that's in here probably, and I'm not an engineer. So if there is an engineer in the audience who wants to say like, oh, here's what that, why that's there. The total slab linear footage right here, that's just the perimeter of the slab. So they're saying for some reason, maybe it's because we're in contact with like dark asphalt outside and the slab edge is meeting right up with that. They're discounting all of the cooling, the free cooling that is the heat sink of the slab being in contact with the ground underneath it. And they're saying that the addition of the heat on all sides, because we're like, this probably is some little shop in the middle of a giant black parking lot, then that would kind of make sense. But this, that doesn't really track for me. This is not a residential, again, once again. 
Now, Windows, 15,000 out of 30,000, roughly. Can the windows be accounting for half of the heat load in the summertime? Yes, that is actually pretty typical. So this all kind of tracks with the exception of this slab. And also, if you want one thing to get gone from this, it would be skylights. Get rid of the skylights and you're, you're way better. Infiltration sensible, right down here. This is a huge number. 10,000, let's say 11,000. So that is crazy leaky. Uh, again, with commercial, we're imagining people walking in and out of the shop all the time, right? And like ringing the bell. Um, that's what that probably is. And by the way, the infiltration sensible, 10,000. Infiltration latent over here, 20,000. So twice as much humidity added to this home, home as heat added to it. Uh, I don't know where this is supposed to be, but this is like a, a really intense amount of humidity for some reason. That is totally outside the realm. And by the way, when you're using Manual J, you can change what's called the infiltration method that it's using. Most designers who are not really good at working the software are just going to go with the basic default simplified air leakage. And they're just going to call it average or tight or leaky. You have five options there. Uh, I have another video about how what those options probably mean. Um, but really, you should be using a blower test because if you're building something, whether you're doing a renovation addition or building new, you need to have a blower test, the most important test in the world for homes. So this these numbers, way outside the pale. This is 30,000 BTUs out of our total of 80,000. That's uh, almost half of the total load that we have here for the air conditioning is going to be because we've got so much air leakage. Like the, I've never met a house that's like that. And I've tested some real leaky ones. Um, so, so the infiltration CFM that they're imagining here is 489 CFM every minute, 489 CFM times 60. That's cubic feet per minute times 60 is 29,000 cubic feet per hour. If we have 10 foot ceilings in this place, 2911 square feet times 10 foot ceilings is 29,000. That means that the infiltration in here is replacing all of the air geometrically in this home once per hour, 24 times a day. Again, totally like this is totally fake. Lastly, ventilation. So ventilation, we've got 7,000 BTUs per hour, uh, 2,000 sensible, 5,000 latent. Again, I don't know where this is. Is this in the Caribbean or something where it's like, it's kind of mild temperatures, but really intense humidity. I don't know. Um, this is only with 120 CFM. That's not an ERV. I'll tell you right off the bat. So it should say ERV on here somewhere and have a recovery ventilation. If you're going to be building tight, which these people are clearly not, and you're going to have ventilation, make sure that it says somewhere on this that the ventilation is going through a recovery core and it's recovering some of that stuff. So at this point, what we've kind of covered some of the ways that people... Uh, trick the system into giving you a higher number. And one of the things they're worried about is BTUs because they don't trust the enclosure builders to build a, a well-built home. The other thing is that they would like to sell you more equipment because it does make more money. Uh, the other thing is that if you have problems with humidity, it's kind of job security at that point. Like you're going to call them back out to, to do this. And I'm not trying to fight with Contractors. Contractors are great. There are some really great ones. And if you want to know who those are, go over to our list, the list of scientific HVAC pros. But like, this is a real messy place to be when you've got, you're handed a piece of paper like this and you're like, this is a bunch of math. I don't, I don't really look at math for my job. This is how you do that. Just be calm. Look at everything. It should be pretty well explained. You should be feel free to ask questions and say, hey, what does this mean? What does this number mean over here? Um, and if they're not willing to explain that to you, they are not going to be willing to explain why they're installing the system on the day of the certain way or like why they forgot to duct that room or why they put five ducts in here when the design only said two. So <clears throat> make sure that you're paired up with the right person who's going to explain things, who's going to do the math the right way, pay attention to, to details. Please do make sure you're subscribed if you like this kind of thing and you want more of it. Uh, comment below if you have anything else to add about this particular uh, set of numbers or about your experience with numbers like these. Thanks very much for watching. Tune in next time.